it was a whole lot of loose ends they tried to tie up in this week's episode of Power. It felt rushed, but I still liked it. Let's talk about it. Yo, what's up? I'm Jaded Nerd. I want to talk about Power Season 6, Episode 6. We know they got Tariq, and we know that the stipulation is, look, you need $2 million. So they have 24 hours to come up with $2 million, okay? Now, what we didn't know the last time is that Tariq is in on it, and it's his idea to fake this abduction. You get what I'm saying? And then, you know, they're going to come out on top, and he's going to split the money with the guy, and they're going to go their separate ways. But what Tariq doesn't realize is that he's going to be double-crossed himself. Once Vincent gets his money, he's going to kill everybody. So Ghost Tommy and Tariq, they all going to be offed, and it's going to be nothing else to be said about this. So we're all watching this situation, and that's a lot of money. And it's not the fact that they can't get the money, but get it legitimately remember they're all being looked at they wanted to put them in this investigation and they can't move like they normally would so everything that they have to do it has to be legal it has to be clean it has to have the appearance of legal so that's why they're trying to figure out where to get the money how are they going to clean it how are they going to make it look legit and then how are they going to be able to pass it off and do what they need to do so they're thinking of options and one of their options is tape you know, when they're running for office, there's always money. There's a, a, a campaign fund. And, and Ghost and Tate have this weird relationship. They don't like each other, but they need each other. At different times, they need each other. Whether Tate needs Ghost for his charisma, his street credibility, his connection to the community, or Ghost needs Tate's inside dealings or his connections, his access to legitimate money and funds. So they do need each other. And as I watched this episode, that's one of the things that stood out to me is that they have this interesting relationship. They need each other more than they want to let on. And I think that really gets under their skin for each one. So once Tasha finds out that, you know, everything's jumped off and Tariq is kidnapped and all that, y'all know Tasha don't play about her kids. So she goes over to Tommy's. And of course, High Booty Keisha is there. Ghost is there. And they are trying to figure out what they're going to do. So they're figuring out their course of action. And they're trying to figure out the best way they're going to be able to clean this money. You get what I'm saying? They're trying to tie up the loose ends. So they have that initial meeting. Tasha's going off because she's like, look, you know, why didn't you tell me? And, you know, Keisha doesn't trust Tasha. So there are all these strange bedfellows all of a sudden. They've been knowing each other for years. They've been rocking with each other for years. They've been calling each other family for years. And it's like they're strangers. That's very weird. Let's talk about Tate because Tate is having his fundraiser and Ghost, Ramona, and Tate are kind of brainstorming, figuring out the best way to come up with money and what they can do. And Tate's not coming up with anything. And then Ghost is really resourceful. He's thinking on his feet. And he comes up with this really good idea to generate a whole lot of cash in a short amount of time. And see, it's actually advantageous for Ghost because remember, Ghost needs money. And he's so desperate and so pressed and hard pressed for it, he has to even approach people like Tate to try to get this money. So... Ghost, of course, everything he does, there's a selfish overtone to it. I'm not going to say under overtone because so Ghost is selfish, but he's able to wow Ramona yet again. And then Ramona, because she's in Tate's ear, she's running that campaign. He has to give in. So again, another setup where we're seeing how he and Ramona, Ghost that is, they work very well together. And I'm telling you, it will not be long before they be doing hop on pop. Y'all mark my words on that. Now that everybody knows what's going on and what they need to be doing, they're trying to work together in a day to get this money. Tosh's getting frustrated because Keisha can't claim this money the right way. She's making mistakes on the books. And remember, they're trying to do all this in 24 hours. So it's not like she's had time. She doesn't have a lot of experience. And you see her frustration. Tosh is kind of all up in her feelings when the neighborhood crumb bone, that dude that kind of pressed up on her and she's got to pay him money to kind of keep her off so she can run the daycare without people messing with her. So I call him the neighborhood crumb bone. So the crumb bone walks in, gets his little bit of money or whatever. And Keisha's like, who's that? And long story short, they have this idea. They have the idea and they find out that they have common ground and they realize that they can use the International Bank of Thoughts down to the strip club child because Tosh is telling her how one of the girls be moving money and weight and things like that. And Keisha goes down there and she gets a bird's eye view, first person perspective of all the wheelings and dealings that be going down to the club, honey. So now they've got a legitimate way to run that money through. They got access to move the product. It's looking really good. People putting in that work. Them whores was working, child. When I looked, when I, I 
I tell y'all I got my life. I was like, y'all better work whores. They was working that money. And as a matter of fact, everybody was working. Everybody was hustling. Everybody was about the business of getting this money because, yo, it's about Tariq. You know what I'm Even though he's a knucklehead, he's young, and he really kind of, yo, you don't want to see him throw his whole life away, yo. That's why they know where they at in life. And they didn't have opportunities to live and mess up. They really trying to give Tariq a chance. So, yo, I was... It was cool to see everybody get about that money. It was really cool to see. They do all this hard work. They get the money together. I mean, by the skin of their chinny chin chins. And Jason decides to intercept and ambush them, Ghost and Tommy, and take half of the money. Now they don't have $2 million. They just got one. And now they got to go tell Vincent that they got half the money. Vincent is pissed. He's angry. He's like, look, the deal was for two, okay? So he's getting a one old sack, okay, and some peaches or whatever like that. And I'm thinking, what the hell is really going on? And Ghost already just instantly figures out what's going on because, you know, Ghost is cruel too. Long story short, he commences to beating Tariq with that bag of peaches. And I was saying to myself, you know what? I know in normal circumstances, this is supposed to be hard to watch. But Tariq is finally getting the ass whooping that he solely needed for so many reasons. And for so many years, Tariq has needed his ass whooped. And he finally got a taste of what that life is like. And I'm like, all right, bro. Mm -hmm. You want to be the man? You want to be the smartest guy in the room? You want to be this and you want to be that? And you're getting beat with a bag of peaches. They don't even respect you enough to beat you with their knuckles, their bare hands. Nothing, young. You get beat with a bag of peaches. <laughs> Girl, they beat you with a bag of peaches. I'm sorry. I got to take a second. We got to drag Tariq, y'all. Y'all have to understand the significance of that. Y'all have to understand the comedy of that. You have to understand the utter disdain for your, your foe. You can't even call them a foe for whatever you want to call them as they sit there strapped down, vulnerable as heck, right? And you decide that you want something that's going to leave marks, that's got heavy weight to it. I get it. It's akin to the bag of bars of soap, okay? And they was beating that dude with them bags of bars of soap. I get it. You want something that's going to leave some bruises, some internal bleeding. I get it. But to beat him with a sack of peaches. <laughs> I don't know why, but that just gave me a kiki and a caca because Tariq's little, I'm telling you, young, he's been having it coming and they had such disdain for him. And that bag of peaches, I might have to try that for my foes, child. I might have to give me what old sack and buy me some peaches and start beating the girls with the bags of peaches, child. <laughs> Long story short, Vincent is like, if you got 24 hours, okay, I need the other half of the money, okay? It's not going to end well. If I don't get the other half, all of y'all are dead. That's what that is. So they're scrambling to figure out how they're going to get it because now they are even in a further bind because they can't get anything from Jason because Jason is like, yo, I ain't messing with y'all. And that's when we see a loose plot hole. I get it. So the crumb bomb is an access to some products. So Tasha got a hookup. So now they can get some more product out there. They can try to raise more money to get the other half because they got to get Tariq back. The detective and sergeant have been trying to get Tariq all day, all evening. They've been pressing up on Tasha, pressing up on everybody, you know, pressing up on ghosts. They almost saw the whole first shipment that he had. Child, I was real nervous, but they've been pressing. And they want to talk to Tariq because they want to know what happened. They want to know because they feel like he saw something. He knows something. He can he can add something to the investigation. And they don't know that he's kidnapped. They don't know about this master plan. But long story short, Tosh is able to convince Vincent to let Tariq come out so they can talk to the police. Not at the precinct, at the cafe. He's talking. This is when we get an opportunity to see just how diabolical Tariq is because he's able to tell a bald-faced lie to these detectives and the sergeant. And he's able to act like, you know, of his own volition, he left out for some hot chocolate, woo, 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 yada, yada, yada. He played on the heartstrings, a little bit of race card here and there. And, you know, Tasha is sitting there and all of this is new to her. She first, the fact that he was kidnapped, the fact that they needed money, that she got to clean the money, got to teach Keisha how to clean it, got to keep a face, a composure. Don't give up the al alibi. You know what I'm saying? Don't cave in front of the sergeant and the detective, hearing everything happening from Tariq, knowing that he's lying. Like there was a lot for her to process. And she's letting him like, look, dude, I know you're lying. I know you're lying. She finds that he didn't got beat with a sack of peaches, child. And she's like, yo, she she's looking like, I don't even know who you are. 
and, and that's one of the first times she's looking at Tariq like a stranger. Like, this is not my son. I don't even know who this man is. Because that's what he's, that's what's standing in front of her, this man. Like, in so many different ways in terms of his dealings. You're dealing with men on this capacity. So, in some way, even though he's a kid, in some ways he's acting as a man getting into this drug game. He really is. So, even though Tariq is diabolical, they still need a million dollars. They're still trying to save him. They don't have no ideas. They're sitting around. Tasha has a great idea. She's like, look, you got the fundraiser. All the rich people are going to be there. They're going to have their jewelry, their pocketbooks, their checkbooks. Let's rob them. Let's set it up. Let's rob them. Let's take what they got. Woo, woo, woo. And that's what it is. It's a great idea. And I got to give high booty Keisha some credit because she actually earned her keep. And she was like, so what happens if something pops off at Truth and y'all can't do it? And then what's going to happen to Tariq? Basically, y'all got a backup plan. What's the backup plan? So even though she got a high booty and she gets on my nerves, she actually earned her keep. So shout out to you, Keisha, high booty. You earned your keep because you let them know. Don't be going up in there guns a-blazing with no backup plan. And then Tariq is still going to be, you know, ass out or whatever. So let's think about this, ladies and gentlemen. And let's calm down with some plans and go up in there knowing, you know, acting like we know what we're doing. So, yeah, girl, you did that. I want to talk about the fundraiser because the fundraiser was one old Kiki and Kaka for me because you got these, you have these people, Tasha, Ghost, Tate, um, you know, and they're all in this element and they're selling the campaign. They're selling, you know, the package and they're selling Tate. They're working for this money child and they're giving their, their, their code switch and their corporate speak. And they're just child. And you they don't even know that they're talking to these hardened criminals, these drug dealers, these, you know, people that do bribes and larceny and money laundering and embezzlement child. You're looking at people that should be in federal prison and y'all would never know it. Yo, they was selling ramona was selling young they was not playing and when they rolled up in there to rob them old biddies and that old money yo i hollered because them people didn't know what to do it was already kind of out of place but when they started drinking they was enjoying the vibe and then when they came up in there with them guns and all that stiff blue hair and aquanet and aquafina and pinking shears child i hollered them old biddies was hollering them old men was hollering they took everything they took the brooches the the the, the appliques the dang on diamond all this i was like yes work and we really get to see a glimpse of ghost we haven't really seen ghost be ghost since first season in my opinion this is when we see ghost orchestrate and, and actually execute on a plan that has multiple outcomes see and it's interesting the way they did this episode because Tariq attempted to do this master plan and again because he doesn't just have he doesn't have the experience he hasn't been doing this long enough he's just starting out he doesn't know um, that's why there were so many failures or mistakes. And then you're looking at someone like Ghost and you're saying, okay, this is how you execute a plan. This is how you orchestrate things. This is how you play upon tendencies and patterns to get the most optimal outcome for your situation. So I thought that was very well done. I thought so. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. But the funny thing about the robbery is that Tate has this look like a familiarity about it. He wasn't like freaking out. And Ramona, Ramona and Tate just didn't seem as affected as everybody else. Tate actually recognized one of the dudes, Alphonse. He recognized him. Ramona, even though you would think she'd be freaking out, dude had the gun to her face, but she just was like, eh, you get what I'm saying? And when Tate was able to take the dude out, he had to kill him or whatever. And he actually, it worked in his favor. Ramona was kind of recounting like, look, you know, the insurance is going to cover this and then the losses are covered in this and then everything's going to be insured up to this. So there's really no losses for anyone here or the club or yourself. Tate is a media darling now. And she was like, it seems like everything worked out perfectly. And then she knew. That's when I knew that she knew. And when I knew that she knew and Ghost knew that she knew, I said, oh, they're going to be playing Hop on Pop soon enough. That's the new Angela. That's going to be the new Angela Valdez. They're going to be doing it all over the town, all over everything. It's going to be all kinds of hot, sweaty Hop on Pop. You mark my words. I'm telling you, I see it coming. So let's get back to Tariq because they got the money. They're meeting up with Vincent. 
And Vincent is like, look, I bet where's the money? They make the exchange. He reveals that, look, I'm going to take all y'all out. Did you actually think I was going to let him get away from what he did to me? And just when it looks like it's about to be curtains and they all surrounded and ghosts again, he's not afraid. He doesn't have that look of desperation. He looks like he's in total control. I hadn't seen that look from him ever since the first season when they showed how he was running the club truth. It's been a long time since we've seen Ghost be Ghost. And that's when we see the dude roll up. And that's when um, Proctor's, um, I guess that's the uncle, the, the girl's uncle, the Proctor's people. I'm just going to say Proctor's people. And apparently Proctor was hooked up with some powerful people, yo. I guess his family outweighs the Vincent family because they rolled up on Vincent. It's like, yo, we got a problem. Because Tariq saved my niece, yo. The night that Proctor got shot up, he saved my niece. He brought her to me safe and sound. So, yo. Nothing needs to be happening to him. We good, right? Basically, he pressed and he pressed up on Vince and he, he pressed up on him. And he was like, look, because if we got a problem, we can go to war. But I don't think you want to go to war with me, my family. Like, you don't want that. Like, you don't want this work. That's what he let him know. You don't want this work. And as angry as Vincent was, and I said, and I said, girl, she is angry. I said, yo, Vincent is angry. Vincent put that gun back down. He acquiesced. He backed down. He said, okay, deuces. And that's what that was. And I was like, okay. And Ghost did a couple of things. Again, he's always in a position for himself. You get what I'm saying? He can benefit others, but he ultimately has to benefit. So when we realized that he actually told dude that it was somebody else that shot up Proctor, he accomplished two things. He, and he gained his loyalty and allegiance, but he also did something in terms of, of keeping Tommy safe. But Tommy's looking at, at ghosts like, well, you know, I did it. You get what I'm saying? Like, again, their relationship, child, I don't even know what to call that. And when Tommy's talking to High Booty, you know, he's letting her know, look, I think Ghost knows. And I think he's more upset about that than he was about Angela. She's like, what you going to do? So that's when we got the new bootleg Bonnie and Clyde child. I don't know what they're going to do. They like the bootleg. The, they're the DVD and Ghost and Tasha is the Blu-ray disc child. It's, they do the same things, but one is one old bootleg DVD off the corner and the other one is high-end Blu-ray. But yo, I thoroughly enjoyed the episode. I thought it was really good. Um, what were some of your favorite parts? I really, <laughs> that sack of peaches took me out. Seeing Tariq get beat by that pe beat by those peaches, child. Oh, child, they just did it for me. Um, and, and just seeing Keisha, even though she's talking this game about she want to be a part, she still has to admit there's so much about the game she don't know. And what about that thing about Tariq's master plan? Just not being quite ready. And then Ghost being able to masterfully execute his plan. Put everything in the comment section below. If you like to see more content and enjoy the discussion, subscribe to the channel. It'd be greatly appreciated. If you can, please throw a like on the video. Subscribe and share is greatly appreciated. I'm Jaded Nerd. I'll talk to y'all next time.